Hello and welcome to the video. This is a roundup of lots of the latest stuff that's come in. Now, for those of you that are Patreons, you'll know that over the last two or three weeks, I've actually kind of been on holiday, kind of a virtual holiday, I guess. We didn't get to leave the country because of coronavirus. Hooray! Uh, but while I have been here and not making lots of videos, lots of great stuff has been coming in. So this is kind of a catch up, really, on some of the technology that has arrived. Now, some of the things we're going to show you in this video will appear in other videos in the coming weeks and a little bit more depth but I thought rather than me put out loads of videos where you have to watch 10-15 minutes to get the kind of summary of each of these bits of technology let me put it all together and show you all the latest stuff that sat on my bench. So the first thing we'll take a look at is this Beta FPV quad. This is the Beta FPV Meteor 65. Uh, links for everything I'm going to talk about are below. This is a little 1S Whoop quadcopter, about $120. You can get it with uh, two kinds of motor, either 19500 kV or 22000 kV. You can get it with FreeSky receivers. FR Sky, Crossfire, DSMX, Vitaba, or you can supply your own receiver as well. Now this is going to be great for indoor flying. Uh, call me a couple of things really to be aware of on this. I'll do a much more detailed video on it in a little while when I've had a real good chance to put it through its paces. The battery connector on this is a little bit different from some of the others that you've seen. So that little adapter that's in the box will absolutely be needed. The two batteries will not be enough to give you a fun day's flying. So do make sure that you're buying extra ones if you're going to invest in one of these. The way it's put together is absolutely beautiful. And I love the fact that the motors plug in too and it feels really nice and rugged. So this is going to be one to uh, keep an eye on and be perfect for those winter months where all you can do is fly indoors. Beta FPV have sent me some uh, settings updates. Uh, apparently there have been a couple of reports of some weird stuff happening with it, um, with the motors in particular. So if you have one of these, you're experiencing that problem, if you want to pop me a comment uh, down below, I'll send you a link to these files that they've sent to me. It's just some changes in the settings for BL Heli and uh, some settings in the beta flight setup on this too. The next thing is this thing from Isheen. This is the Mon Eagle. This is an FPV monitor. Now, lots of people look at these and kind of sneer and say, oh, why would I ever use one of them? And I absolutely understand why you think that. However, I have a monitor that's very similar to this on my desk that I'm using all the time for building and setup. It's actually the screen from my Fat Shark Transformers. And I don't use the Fat Shark Transformers very much, but the screen that slots at the end of them is worth its weight in gold when you are troubleshooting. Now this has an onboard DVR and it has an inbuilt battery as well. So you can charge it over USB and then you can either take it to the field if you want to kind of just tune in and watch other pilots or if you are somebody that does an awful lot of building and troubleshooting with FPV equipment, having something like this on your desk when you're trying to figure stuff out is worth its weight in gold. It's a lot easier to set up things like menus and cameras and stuff than it is to try and do it with a set of goggles. Really nice control, the feel of it's very good, the plastics feel really nice and they've got a really good finish. SD card side for recording, you also have the voltage in. And if I take the cables out from underneath, you have this stuff here, which is just the mount for it. You can uh, attach it to the carrying handle of your radio if you want to do that. Uh, and that can be very handy, particularly in winter. But here you can see there's an XT60 to USB adapter. So you can run it and recharge it from any compatible WiPo. Only one downside to this, in my humble opinion, and that's the fact that they've used RPSMA connectors for the antennas. I know Isheen do a lot of that with their stuff. Uh, but I have a big investment in SMA style antennas, the Fat Shark style. So unfortunately, that doesn't suit me perfectly. I'd have to use little adapters on this. But apart from that, if you're looking for a little screen like this to either go on the top of the radio or maybe to have in your bag so you could show other people what you're looking at when you're flying FPV or troubleshooting, this is a cute option. Next one to look at is lithium ion batteries. Now I have a number of videos where I've played with lithium ion batteries and lithium ion uh, doesn't give you the very high 
current that you get from LiPo batteries, but you can put a lot more capacity, milliamp hours, into the same physical space. That means it's perfect for fixed wing, and I use them an awful lot in fixed wing. Now, trying to get hold of packs like this uh, has been quite tricky, and more people are bringing them out. And these latest two are from Farin's Frames. Again, links down below. One is a 3000 milliamp hour 3S lithium ion pack that will be the equivalent of a 3S LiPo battery, uh, but in very small package, you're getting a whopping 3000 milliamp hours. And if I just pop these on the scales, give you an idea how much they weigh, Let's just weigh this 3S 3000 milliamp hour pack. It's only 168 grams. I have 3S packs, LiPo packs with that that weigh three to four times that. And this is a 6000 milliamp hour 4S lithium ion pack. And this one, if I can get to sit on here, is about 432 grams. So for fixed wing vehicles in particular, lithium ion is a great option. I uh, haven't had a lot of time to test these yet. The way they're put together, some of the heat shrink isn't very neat, but it's really great to see more options for lithium ion coming out for us fixed wing pilots or for some of these larger packs if you have a very efficient multi-rotor that can handle the weight they can give you exceptionally long flight times check out my endurance builds that I did a year or two ago where I use lithium ion batteries to easily get 45 minutes plus on a 7 inch quad next item we're going to have a look at are two of the latest ESC 4-in-1 ESCs from Holybro now I like the Holybro flight controllers and the ESCs I find them pretty bulletproof so along with people like Maytech they are my go-to flight controller and ESC manufacturer these are the latest ones there's a 65 amp and a 45 amp version so this is the Teco 32 F 3 4 in 1 ESC and then the metal ESC is the one with the higher rated capacity. So let me just quickly take them out of the box and show you what they look like. So with the ESC you get all the mounting hardware and you get the cables to connect it up to a flight controller that has that kind of connector. Nice lovely big cap to put on the inputs to help with smoothing. Great to see that in the kit. That wasn't something that they used to ship back in the day. And then the actual 4-in-1 ESC itself looks like a work of art. It looks like it should be on a necklace. Uh, really, really pretty thing. The way that Holybro put these things together um, is the reason why I just rely on them so much when I'm doing builds. So if we open up the metal ESC, and this is the one with the higher rating, I think this is a 65 amp setup, uh, this one is very, very bling. So again, the same mounting hardware and cables as the previous one, and then you have the same large capacitor for smoothing, and then this one, you have an awful lot of hardware on here, and you can see how pretty it actually looks. So if you are looking to do a build, and you are kind of looking for 4-in-1 ESCs, particularly if you're going to be using one of the compatible flight controllers from Holybro that work with these, uh, these would definitely be on my list. I just love the care and attention that Holybro put into this stuff, and it just works. While we're talking about Holybro, or Holybro, depending on how you want to pronounce it, it's worthwhile talking about these big boxes that I've got in, which are their new RTK GPS units. Now, RTK GPS gives you much, much higher accuracy levels than regular old GPSs, the kind of stuff that I'm using in my builds. They're a little bit more expensive, but if you are using them for things like drone displays, where you need very, very accurate positioning, uh, this is the way that they do it. So until now, it's been quite an expensive proposition. Holybro have just brought out three RTK GPS units that plug into things like their Durandal, their Pixhook 4, and those kind of flight controllers, and give you fantastic resolution and amazing accuracy. So let me unbox them and show you what they actually look like. Uh, the first one, the smallest one we'll have a look at is the is this one here. This is the Rover Lite. So this is the HRTK M8P Rover Lite. It looks very, very similar to a standard GPS unit, um, but it has an awful lot more technology in. Sadly, it won't plug into directly into things like Pixhawk and others, uh, but does have a 10 pin connector that will plug directly into the Holybro 
uh, Pixhook style flight controllers. Guide price for this is just under $200, uh, which seems very expensive, but if you compare it to what an RTK GPS would normally cost you, that's actually a really nice price. Again, comes with all the mounting hardware, and you'd use this one in the kind of places where you would normally use a regular GPS, so typically on the top of a stalk, on something like a multi-rotor, or on the back of something like a fixed wing. Now to compare it to the here to GPS on something like a Pixhawk Cube, uh, it's a little bit smaller as well, which is nice. It just is sad that the connector, it's a 10 pin connector. So it, if you have something like this Pixhawk Cube, uh, you can't plug it in. Next one to look at then is the HRTK M8P. So this is one that has a much higher gain than the Rover Lite and it's for more specialized applications. So it's kind of like a helical antenna on the top rather than just a flat antenna that we're used to. The base plate has a USB connector and it also has the cable that you can use to run and plug it into your Durandal or whatever it is that you're using it with. This is absolutely the kind of thing that's going to be put on high-end drones that are being used for serious applications. This definitely isn't aimed at the casual Ardu pilot or Ardu copter flyer. This retails for around $332, dollars A lot of us would like a complete model with flight controller for that kind of money, but if you are serious about needing really high-end accurate GPS on your model, then this is something to look at. Again, it seems quite expensive, but actually compared to some of the technology that's been out before, it isn't at all. Last one is the HRTK M8P base. Uh, this is about $370. This is a unit that would go onto the base station. It has exactly the same kind of box, but the antenna that connects into it connects via a flying lead and has kind of a quarter inch connector on the bottom uh, that you can use to stick it on top of a pole. So again, this is some kind of more high-end serious stuff. I may use the Rover Lite in a project that I'm about to start soon with the Durandal, but if you are looking for much more accurate GPS where you're not going to have to pay thousands, then this new range from Holybro will definitely give you an option for that. Last product in the roundup is this camera. This is the new Eagle 3 from Runcam. Now, for those of you that watch the channel a lot, you'll know that I am a huge fan of the Eagle cameras. I tend to use them in fixed wings. Uh, I know some of you have had issues. I've had or heard of reports of like white flashes on very fast um, flips and rolls. Uh, I don't get that because I tend to use the Eagles on things like fixed wing. I use things like the Runcam Racer on things like multi rotors. Eagle is a fantastic camera, particularly for fixed wing. Now, I've started building recently lots of other models, uh, and the latest uh, Matek flight controllers have the ability to support two cameras. So what I'll do is in the nose, and you'll have seen this if you watch the channel a lot, in the nose I have something like a Runcam Hybrid that can record HD, and then with the secondary camera, I will have a secondary camera plugged in so it points down and I can flip between the two. Now, there are issues with that if you're using something like a rapid fire, but I'm not going to get that into that in the video. And this potentially could be fantastic for that second camera, or if you're making a smaller model and you want eagle levels of performance, actually popping it in the nose and keeping it nice and small. The performance of the camera is exactly as you'd expect. It's an eagle. Uh, run cam really would take a lot of time and effort. All the stuff that you'd expect is in the menus as well. So this is just an eagle in a smaller package. The performance is very, very good. The light handling, the color reproduction, all that stuff is fantastic. Only one downside for me. It's NTSC only, and I wish Runcam had added the PAL option. Hopefully this is just a one-off thing and Runcam are gonna to continue to add PAL. NTSC is fine for the Americas, but lots of us in Europe run PAL, and I run PAL as well because it actually gives you an extra few lines at the bottom of your screen when you're running your on-screen display, so my LSD can be a little bit more laid out when I'm flying FPV. So hopefully this will be something that returns in future versions. But if you've been wondering about it, the testing I've done here, it just works exactly the same as the other Eagles. It's slightly smaller, slightly newer, and the performance is exactly what you'd expect. 
So there you have it. That's the roundup of all the stuff on the bench as I'm recording this video. However, stuff's coming in all the time. So if you have a particular question about any of this stuff or you want to see something more about it, then do pop a comment down below. I will be making further videos that go into some of this technology in a lot more depth. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.